Okay, we are recording. Um, this is the third 4844 breakout room. Uh, share the agenda again in the chat. Um, at a high level, uh, there's been like some updates in terms of the implementation on the DevNet, and uh, we'll start by kind of sharing those and going over it. Um, there's a bunch of things left to do in terms of like work on the DevNet and uh, I know over the past couple of weeks, a bunch of uh, engineers have reached out that they wanted to help. So we'll make sure to take time to cover those and, and see you know, if there's some, some folks here who, who can help with any of these, these tasks. Um, and then I wanna make sure we kind of spend a, a good chunk of the call as well, talking about the, the higher level uh, kind of uh, design questions. Um, so there's, there's two main or three main ones. Um, this idea of like how the, the base fee and the, the whole fee market works for this, um, the sync, uh, the sync design, which Terrence wrote a really useful doc for, and then uh, updates on uh, KZG verification optimizations. Um, if we get all that done, we're happy. If we have some more time, uh, I think some stuff to chat about is just like, you know, if we have a second DevNet, what's the feature set we want? Um, if there's any updates on the KZG ceremony side, um, but. Yeah, these the KCG stuff has called every every two weeks, so it's it's fine to, to leave that to there. Um, yeah, I guess Mofi, do you want to give us a quick update and maybe like demo of 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 the DevNet? Hey Tim, yeah, yeah, sure. So um, we have a DevNet out. Um, this is going to be the um, first of. Uh, Hopefully, only two DevNets uh, we're going to have rolled out for the uh, EIP4844. Um, this DevNet, basically, um, there are a few things in the spec that we still need to, um, I guess, discuss and finalize. So hopefully, the, the goal of this DevNet is to let us, um, I guess, test what we have, what we've already come into consensus. and. Um, have something that a community can start like playing around with and hacking with um, before we later like decide on what we need for the spec. A at that point, we'll have like a second DevNet and then um, we can go from there. So um, DevNet we have running available um, contains basically four validator nodes and four beacon nodes. And I wrote up like a pretty handy guide that's linked in the GitHub issue to help onboard folks into it. Let me post it here on Zoom. So to, to like connect to the DevNet, all you need is basically um, the latest Geth and Prism implementations of uh, the spec. And um, I posted like some configs you could use. It's not really geared towards, um, um, I guess, folks that are not very familiar with um, running Geth or Prism. So the, the, the guide is a little bit Baroque, but it should be able to get you started. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Let me see if I can maybe demo how this will work. <laughs> I don't think I've done that yet. Just to like show you how it would work. Um, let me start my video if that works. Is there where I could like share my screen? You should be able to share a screen, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. There we go, share screen, all right. Um, I hope everyone can see my screen now. Yep. Cool. Um, So um, 
we actually have like so Michael from Coinbase has like this really cool repo that sets up like the Docker Compose, um, making it very easy for you to like connect to the DevNet. Um, let me post that in the chat. I think that'll be like the easiest way to onboard users. Basically takes um, the guide that I wrote and like um, solidifies that into like a couple scripts. And uh, I think Michael, we still need to like update the Genesis in that repo, right? Yeah, I can do that right now. Cool. So I have that repo. Um, Hold in. Um, in. In my instance, I have the Genesis running. And pretty much, if you want to like start the DevNet, kill my containers here, you can pull the repo, like I posted in the chat. And I think once Michael has like updated the Genesis files, I think you also need to update the, the Geth image to point to the latest one because it has the embedded uh, Geth Genesis as well. But once you have that set up, um, all you have to do is just run doc and compose up and it should start both Geth and Prism, connect to the boot nodes we have set up for both execution and consensus and uh, should be good to go. Um, this would take a while because like, I think um, we started the DevNet like over a day ago. So it would take like a couple minutes, not hours to like sync it. And then once that synced in, I created like this really handy script um, called Blob Utils. Um, it basically lets you upload and download blobs pretty easily. So um, let me post that in the chat as well. You kind of use that to um, interact with um, with blobs in the network um, pretty easily. So, for example, um, if you want to like upload a blob file, or rather to send a blob transaction, and I like use like this command, you give it like a your guess URL, a blob file, a private key. Hopefully, no one everyone forgets that one. And uh, to and you can easily send blob transactions uh, to the network. Um, same thing you can do it for like to download um, a blob that was sent to the uh, network. You use the same tool. It's really self-explanatory if you take a look at the, the help page. Yeah, can't really do that right now because my node is still syncing. But hopefully, you get the idea. Um, yeah. Uh, so right now, one thing that's kind of missing, we'll get into it later. Um, while you can like interact with the beacon chain network, um, you can't send any Bob transactions without ETH, right? So um, feel free to ping me on Discord or Telegram if um, you need some ETH to get started with, and then I can just send that to you. Um, if you want to start sending blob transactions. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, any questions? Yes, no questions, but yeah, this is very cool. Thanks for, for demoing, Mofi. Yep. Um, yeah, and I guess, uh, you you kind of hinted at this, uh, like there's there's a couple of things missing right now. So like one of them is obviously a, there was like a faucet or some less manual way to, 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 to get ETH on the DevNet. I think that would be pretty useful. Um, and then beyond that, um, yeah, beyond that, sorry, I had like a little list of other things. Um, yeah, beyond that, I guess is if there was a way to like automatically use your blob transaction sending tool and like kind of 
span the network or create like a high load of blob transactions. I feel like that would be good to see the nodes processing that. Um, to be able to also just like verify that when the blobs expire, they're actually like taken out of the network and like um, removed kind of from, from the, the beacon chain. Um, and then I don't know if like it would make sense to have an RPC endpoint as well so that people who may want to interact with the DevNet but not uh, run uh, the whole Docker setup uh, might be able to do that. Um, yeah, I, is there yeah, anything else yeah. you think? Yeah. Yeah, the RPC endpoint, um, I think that's something we can definitely add in um, in okay. a day or two. Nice. Nice. We just need to like harden it a little bit on yeah. our optimism side yeah. to make sure that users don't spam the network. But yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then I'm curious, I know, yeah, there's a bunch of like newer folks uh, on the call. Um, does anyone feel like one of these things like around either the faucet kind of a blob spamming transaction tool, um, just like testing the expiry of blobs, that's something that someone's interested in working on and we can follow up after the call to kind of get that sorted. Yeah, it's, it's probably something I could I could look at. I Obviously, this is a new tool, so I'll have to try it out. Yeah. And I'll have to set up a VM to um, put guests and prism. So was there a thing in particular in that that you were like interested in working on or just generally? Uh, no, I just, just want to um, help with anything. And I'm sort of learning at the same time. So like, I, I run a mainnet validator node, but um, It'd be good to to set up a test net and while I'm playing with it, I can help out with whatever whatever testing you need. Cool. Um, yeah, that sounds great. And we can chat uh, in the in the in the Discord uh, room as well. Yeah. I could yep. I could try my hand at the the faucet if that's helpful. Yeah, that that would be. Um, okay. And and I think uh, Georgios is on the call. I think Paradigm has a faucet repo that might be open source. Um, I don't know if that's 100% correct, Georges. Yeah, we do. So it might. Um, cool. We yeah. cannot support for new networks to the extent that you can give us the. Okay, cool. Okay, I'll take a look at that. Um, sweet. Yeah, I can probably get um, uh, some nodes running as well, and I could take a look into uh, writing like a utility to just kind of spam transactions or whatever. That would um, be yeah. You also mentioned. Uh, you also mentioned it might be useful to have like an RPC endpoint. So uh, I know Mofi just said that you want to harden it to avoid spam on the network, but is it useful to kind of have an open one that we designate for spam? <laughs> um, maybe that can be useful to just kind of uh, uh, look at node usage and things like that. I think you probably, it's probably best to just if you're spamming the network actually run your own instance of the test net and like propagate the transactions that way um okay yeah i don't yeah unless mofi disagrees that would be my gut feeling but yeah rather than yeah. rallying it through like a, a like external rpc yeah yeah um i think i guess by spam i mean not quite the right word um meant, meant to like to dos like there are our endpoints it's generally fine. Um, the the endpoint once we have it set up, you can spam it. Um, it's just you will have like some DOS protections, and it's best if you really want to go that far. Then, like what Tim said, it's best to just run your own node and uh, send transactions to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. For that blob spammer, uh, should it basically simulate kind of like a realistic scenario where it's like the you know like a, a roll up? posting blobs to the same contract every time or, or, or it's the same address rather every time or should it like try to balance between addresses and try to just like throw things everywhere to see if it's very similar? Like what's the what's the worst case scenario, I guess, for the on, on the node side? Um, I, I would say try to like trigger the, um, so we have limits in place, like for example, the number of blobs in the block um, that can be included in the block or 
the number of uh, the size of the blobs that can be included in a block, um, it would be really useful to be able to um, um, push these limits or trigger them. And that's one way we could see um, to make sure that um, the network is still working even as those limits are being hit. And I feel in terms of like, yeah, that's probably the main thing. If you want to make it like a tad more realistic, it's like there's probably going to be a handful of different contracts that like mostly uh, get like interact with the blobs. You know, if you think of like L1, right, there's like, call it maybe five to 10 roll ups. There's not a hundred, but there's also not just one. So that's maybe the order to aim for, but I think it's also fine like for a V1 to just, yeah make hit the limit on one contract make sure that works and then if, if it does you can uh, you, you can kind of scale up from there um and yeah I'll, I'll i'll post this here i'm not sure how helpful this is for the spamming stuff but marius from the get team has a bunch of like fuzzing repos and, and transaction sending repos like i don't know like I, I know that they don't work with uh, blob transactions. I don't know if it's easiest to extend something like that or just to write something from scratch. Um, but yeah, just want to share in case that's helpful. Um, sweet, yeah, and I think yeah, the the I think uh, at a at a high level, if we can get the faucet up just like some spam on the network and RPC endpoint, and then a couple of people running uh, the DevNet and also trying to like look at the kind of blobs expiring and making sure that works. That's really valuable. Um, I think the other part that's like maybe not as urgent, but it's if we have a second DevNet of that working towards like documenting things better. Um, and that can be as simple as like, if you're playing around with this and like you're in Mophie's HackMD and something is like wrong or could be better documenting, just like gradually adding to it. Um, that's that's always helpful because you've hit a bunch of edge cases when you have different people running this stuff. And um, yeah, uh, hopefully the DevNet V2 is like a bit more accessible where you don't need to be like a protocol level developer, but maybe you're just like an app developer and you're able to use it smoothly. Maybe I missed this, but is the blob expiry set to something pretty low on the DevNet so it's easily testable? Like yeah, hours I, I think it's a day. Is that right, Mofi? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Sweet. I guess any other questions, thoughts, comments? Um, yeah, I have a bit of a uh, new question about uh, getting the DevNet running. Um, are there, sh should I just follow the same sort of hardware guide guides for like ETH mainnet for uh, disk size, number of CPUs, RAM, things like that? Or can I go lower? Um, you can go lower, um, I think. Particularly the um, the disk requirements will be much lower, yeah. But nice. okay. I imagine though, as as people start spamming things, things can get quite gnarly. <laughs> okay, cool. I've got a few servers on Hetzner that are bare metal and have a fair amount um, of resources, but okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, that's actually a really good question. Like, it, maybe we could just add something in the HackMD as well for just like a recommended, like, yeah, minimum processing and, and storage. Yeah. I, I, I can take on another task, which is just to sort of monitor the dev, uh, um, the monitor the node and uh, try to get like a baseline of resource usage. Um, and we can maybe publish that as like a first step for how much you actually need for uh, EIP 4844. Yeah, that would be great actually, yeah. Tim, it seems like it'd be useful to get some of the L2s to be running on this so we can see, you know, actually have some real roll-ups. Yes, I think 
uh, Frodo's not on this call. He said that he was planning to look into doing this. Uh, on the optimism side, I believe they still needed some changes to like bedrock to make it work. Um, yeah, and I think, uh, yeah, I can I can also send it around to uh, the other L2 teams to see if, if some of them have the bandwidth to, to deploy on it quickly. Um, no, that's a, that's a good point. I think, I guess, especially once we, if we have like an, an RPC setup, then it's much easier for them to, you know, they don't even have to run the DevNet basically. They just have to like deploy their smart contracts and um, yeah. Okay. Anything else on the DevNet itself? Are there plans for an RPC setup? Or is it... uh, yeah, Mofi said he was going to work on one. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Is that a typo for the 20 gigs, Mofi, or is that actually 20 gigs? It's actually 20 gigs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I imagine we'll probably bump that up pretty soon. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Sweet. Anything else on the DevNet? Um, no, I think that's it. Okay, sounds good. Um, okay, next up, I guess the thing I, I wanted to chat about uh, was uh, like find your PR about uh, the the fee market. Um, I know Proto had left a bunch of comments on it. Um, I'm curious, you have a feeling basically of where we've landed and um, whether whether we can go ahead and, 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 and merge this or is there still some, some work to be done? Um, so my understanding with the disagreement on the fee market is it's a question of, are we targeting more of a like long-term um, number of blobs or right. are we tar I mean, I guess they're both going to target a long-term number of blobs, but one is going to target the long-term number of blobs in a much slower way. Whereas the 1559 mechanism is going to very quickly, um, change the price of the blobs to reach that amount. And I think that the original idea was that we didn't want to like use the 1559 mechanism here again um, because of how quickly it was moving within just a handful of blocks. Um, so on that front, I don't know if anyone has any other thoughts related to it. Like, I don't think that this PR is changing the fee mechanism from what it was. It's really only removing oh. the fee mechanism from the from state contract. Right. That was it. the original goal of the PR is to not modify anything, but just take yeah. it out of the state contract. Yeah. And do you think, like, my recollection is like we were all on the same page about that, but then it probably makes sense to not merge this now if we want to make further changes. Is that is that right? Uh, I mean, I I'm on board with making this change because I think that like the change is only removing out of the state contract, which everybody except for Vitalik is okay with. And we should separately modify yeah. the fee mechanism if we desire. Okay. I think, yeah, I, I think that makes sense. Um, does anyone else have thoughts on this? Yeah. Also just briefly wanted to give my plus one to that as well. I think it makes a lot of sense just because um, kind of having it in the state is just, this excess source of complexity. And even if we're going to change it in the future, the, the mechanism itself, I, I, I don't see why, why it makes sense to wait into bundle. So I think having them separate is the right way to go. Cool. And then, okay, so let's, yeah, let's do that. And then uh, we were going to discuss this on the CL call last week, but we got busy with the merge um, and maybe we can bump it to next week's call and see if there's a, uh, yeah, some more. Uh, insights there because I think yeah the, the core of those things was like the, is it better for the nodes to receive like short bursts of blobs or just like a more constant stream of them and uh, we wanted CL teams feedback for that 
can't we um uh, question for for matt uh, in that you mentioned that the reason you choose one over the other is that one results in a slower adjustment can't we get that from the 1559 mechanism by just tuning the constants so we can adjust like how fast it reacts just by tuning constants i think that we should be able to also achieve it um by by tuning the constants I mean, I think for now, this is unfortunately kind of the distinction between the kind of this long run average and the 59 mechanism is always on these calls a little hand wavy because I don't think we've fully kind of looked into like rigorously uh, looked into it enough yet. So I think that's definitely like the next thing to do. Um, um, yeah, I'm also not 100% certain that it's in a place yet where necessarily it's already very helpful to get CL teams feedback on just because again, like it's a little bit hand wavy, right? Kind of describing the distinction for now. Um, but yeah, we, we, we can talk about it offline. And I think, I think the thing that the reason why uh, we did want to reach out to CL teams is there was an argument that like maybe actually getting like burst of blobs is like a bit easier to process because uh, yeah, they're like easier to process in chunks than like in small increments. And I think if there is something there with like how the clients work that can at least help like cut the design space or like, yeah, narrow the design space a little bit. Um, I don't know, Terrence, do you have any thoughts on that? Or actually, yeah, and Enrico is here as well, so yeah. Yeah, I don't have a strong opinion. I need to see some benchmark data or even just play with myself first before I form an, before I form an opinion for this. What type of benchmark data would you like to see? Uh, like just the basic, like the how, like just the compression data and how fast to verify and to validate stuff. And okay. yeah. Uh, Enrico, any thoughts from you? Yeah, I'm, I just jumped into the um, into the topic and I need to wrap my head around this. So I need some time to to form uh, some. This kind of question before before asking yeah okay sounds good um, and, and by the way sorry just to add one thing um you mentioned that there's some sinking uh discussion uh, uh taking place in some somewhere in github or somewhere do, do we do we know where where this is taking taking mm -hmm. place so i can catch up i don't know that there's a discussion and that was going to be the next thing but basically we did discuss it in various places and like Terrence wrote a doc summarizing kind of the, the approaches. Um, I guess we, we can move to that uh, next if there's nothing else on the fee market. Uh, but it okay, seems okay. Like, yeah, just on the fee market, it seems like merging this PR just about this moving things to the, the header instead of the state is, is like, a, we should do that. Um, unclear about what the right like design mechanism is and, um, we probably want to get some more data and potentially some more opinions from like client teams to, to like inform that. But it's also not, it doesn't seem like the most urgent thing and getting like the verification optimizations in before is probably uh, better. Does that seem roughly right? Okay. I'll take this as a yes. Um, okay, so yeah, next up, blob sync. Uh, Terrence, do you want to so, actually take a minute? Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to say one last thing on that. If somebody w w could just go through and give a thumbs up on it so that, um, yeah, we feel confident because there was a change in how we're calculating the gas cost for the blob, it, it should have the same result, but... Um, it, it would be nice to have someone else thumbs it up just to make sure. I can do that. If that helps. Okay, yes. thanks. So I'll go ahead and merge it once we get the thumbs up. Sounds good. Um, sweet. Okay, on the blob sync, Terrence, do you want to take a minute or two and like walk us through your doc, uh, either sharing your screen or we can pull it up i've i've uh, posted it in the chat yeah sure i don't so like if you just can just open the dog 
Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I am unmuted. Yeah. So just yeah. open the dog and um, I don't think we need to keep this long. So I can just quickly, um, I can quickly like go through it. So there's just two approaches we are considering right now. One is you essentially um, decouple the, the, the sidecar and the block. And that's, that's how the spec is right now. So there are two different objects. And the, uh, and the and one is just tightly coupled, right? So you put the sidecar within the block, right? And there are just essentially pros and cons between each trade-off for the coupling, right? So it's, if it's not coupled, then it's likely more optimized and more extensible for the spec because for then sharding, we can essentially reuse the same like function. And then if it's coupled, then it's more better for the client, I would say so. But like, honestly, like I went through like two different approaches here and there. I thought about this uh, sometime and I don't think the difference like is that drastic, right? So if you, if, if you don't couple it, like there's this more code on the client side because you have to handle the queue. You basically have to wait until re you receive the block before you can process the sidecar and before you can run for choice. And then the changes are like, not that bad because we kind of do this for attestations already today. Just say today you receive like an attestation on the beacon chain, right? You can't really process the attestation until you get the block that the attestation is vote for. So it's kind of the similar concept. So I don't foresee like that, like I don't foresee like that bad of, I don't foresee that bad of a pushback from the client team. But with that said, right, I do want to like, Get more input to the client team because like if just my input is not enough there's like four other awesome teams out there they definitely should voice their um op opinion i would say so and um yeah so tldr like it i have, i think it's okay to not having them together but it just requires more client work and then i love to give more feedbacks on the client team side and that's it Got it. Um, Enrico, I assume you haven't had time to, to form an opinion on this. Yeah, I just yeah. need to go, go through it. And uh, yeah. I was more, more think, thinking about uh, thinking, but I see at the, at the very end of the, the document, you you mentioned the blob sidecars by, right. range, by range. So, I mean, this one is the change to actually be able to sync yeah, um, so right now there is a um, request respond gossip topic, basically allow your peers to request the sidecars by range, right? So one right. thing that like one scenario we can think of is that um, a node joins, say you've seen the checkpoint sync, whether it's finalized epoch, finalized checkpoint, or with subjectivity checkpoint. Uh, when he joins, right? And uh, that's usually gonna be like T minus a few days or, or T minus one week, something like that, right? So it needs to basically backtrack and get the and get the blob data, right? But usually it doesn't mean that it has to backtrack and get the block. So that's kind of the asymmetry right there. So if they're coupled together, right? You can just say, hey, we can just backtrack and just get a block for the last month easy. But now, since they're not coupled, you just you have to backtrack and get a blob it's without the block. So that's kind of like the little odd part. I mean, it is workable, but that's just something to thought about. Yeah, to think about. Yeah. Right. So yeah, on my end, I'm going to also like forward this to Paul from Lighthouse and then everyone else just to try to get more feedback on the client side. But I really don't think like, since there are every, everyone's really busy working on the merge, I don't think we'll form like an opinion or a decision until like maybe shortly after the merge. So yeah. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Yeah. Edgar? Yeah, um, I was just wondering, this could be a stupid question, but um, would there be any sense in keeping them like, loosely coupled like like basically separate but creating some sort of new wrapper to just uh kind of or during kind of uh so 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 why while you are at the head of the network basically while you're not kind of doing history or something that, that like they usually come in together 
but then for basically further back data, they, they're still in their separate form. So it's kind of like kind of combining the properties of the two. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, no, that's what I'm actually doing on the code, but that's kind of, in my opinion, like implementation detail depends on like other languages may handle like differently. For example, for Go, I'm just using interface for it, which is quite nice. So on the code level, they're pretty much treated as the same object. But the point is that you cannot do one thing without the other for like for the four choice. So you always have to wait, right? So I think that's kind of the debate here. But from, from the language perspective, like people can make it look the same, basically. I know, but what I meant was just like though on the, on the networking level, right? To basically have some new kind of official kind of structure, something that's kind of like, you know, block with blob or some with blobs or something. And then basically you usually request that entire thing. So they just come in together. Um, but, but, but yeah. I see. I yeah. So it basically a new network object. No, I think that's definitely one option as well that we should probably consider. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else on this sink? Okay. And then I guess um, the last kind of spec level issue was around uh, the, the verification optimizations. Uh, George, I know you've been spending some time looking at that and talking to the supranational team. Mike. One two, one two, one two. Oh Hello. yes, we got you. We got you. Excellent. Okay, so um, I talked with the supranational team like two weeks ago or something, um, and we gave them like a list of um tasks that we need from i mean that's not exactly related to the verification thing that's more about the kcg library situation right but like um we gave them a list of functionality we need from the library they came up they came back with us with mm, like some timelines and stuff like that then we discussed it further and kind of scrutinized the stuff that we already sent them and kind of try to minimize the work to make it come out as soon as possible so that we don't um so you know so that ideally client teams have a library to work with as soon as possible so now um they're supposed to get back to us this week with a new um deliverable list um but I haven't heard from them this week, so I don't have any more precise updates. Got it. Um, I assume no one else has updates on this. Okay, and then I guess on the actual optimization side, so I think the, the gist of the issue there was like Mofi, you implemented like some of the original optimizations that were added to the spec, and then they were not actually as uh, as performant as as expected. And I know there was like some back and forth about that in the in the Discord, uh, but I'm curious, yeah, what was the status there? Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, basically, I think um, George pointed to um, basically. So the the crux of the I guess performance um, problem was it was there were two major operations that I think we can you know optimize um, when computing aggregate proofs, and one of them is the um, the modular inverse. We do a lot of them when evaluating uh, the polynomials, and George pointed out that we sh we should be batch. Um, um, running modular inverses and pointing out, helpfully pointing out to like a resource in Killage where this could be done. I haven't taken a look at this, um, but this week that'll be like my, like my main thing to get back into that. 
related to that, this though, um, one other thing that kind of like want to bring out is that we also noticed that running the SSE routes on the uh, Fiat Tremere challenges is expensive. Um, would it make sense to use a different um, method of like computing like those challenges for the polynomial yeah. evaluation? Yeah, I think we really don't need the entire like Merkel tree situation that SSZ has to get security here. So ideally we would just switch that entire hashing thing to just use like straight up, um, you know, a basic hash function instead of computing like crazy Merkel trees. Um, I guess that also has um, we have to change the spec, I guess, to be able to do that. Um, I haven't done it yet, but you're right that this is probably also um, useless time drain. Right. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I will also look into that. Um, I, I guess we can discuss the details offline. Um, because before we, I think before we should change the spec, we should like take a look at a a couple hash functions and see what works um, performance wise and without sacrificing security. And then we can go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, my, my, my basic intuition would be to just use the underlying hash function that the Merkle tree uses, but instead of doing the crazy tree thing, just like straight up hash the value. However, um, yeah, we should talk about it offline and we can figure it out. That's a good point. I actually forgot about this. Yeah. Because that seems like the main blocker. It's like if we can get that, or I mean, for like a, a next iteration, if we can get that, then we can get some benchmarks. It helps figure out like uh, the, the throughput with regards to blobs and, and that might shape the fee market um, design as well. So yeah, that seems like a really valuable next step. Will you be at SBC, Morphe? Uh, wait, SBC, what's SBC? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, some uh, conference in um, Stanford or something in two weeks. Oh, that. Um, I hadn't had plans to, but I could take a look. Yeah, why not? Okay. Oh, great. It's in the States. So yeah, I should be able to make this one. <laughs> Just anything international. I'm still like trying to get my passport. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. Yeah. If you do plan to go, I think there's a bunch of side events as well. And we can probably, oh yeah, they're actually, they're listed literally on the, on the, the top of it. So that's, that's good. Nice. And now. I just okay. want to tell you that if you come, we can take like uh, do some um, hands on together and figure out the more precisely performance stuff. Yep, I think that'd be really useful. Yeah, I'll try to make it. Sweet. Um, okay, I think, yeah, I think that was like the last kind of big, I guess, design level issue in the spec. Um, is there anything else that people feel is like really important to make progress on, on this that we haven't discussed so far? Okay, that's a good sign. Um, on the case of G side, like I said, they have like biweekly calls now, so we don't have to like uh, kind of rehash all of them, but it seems like they're getting audits started for uh, the ceremony, both for the spec and the implementation. Um, so so um, that's, that's good. So I don't think we'll be blocked on that. Um, 
and I think, yeah, just in terms of like next steps, generally, um, we had all these like tasks about the existing death nets. So um, yeah, if, if folks can, can help out with those, that would be valuable. And then that means like Mofi can, can start focusing on this uh, verification optimization. Um, that seems like the main thing we want to like unblock now. And then based on how complicated it is to get the fee market, we might want to have a second DevNet. Either either we we just like combine those two into a second DevNet, or maybe we like launch them separately if the fee market is a big other separate discussion. Um, but yeah, just getting the optimizations right seems like the, the core thing. Um, anything yeah. else? Oh, sorry, yeah, uh, go ahead. I just wanted to add on to that, like in the interest of progress. Yeah. Um, really appreciate if um, we could get more feedback on like clients PR so that we can merge that as possible. And I know like there's some things in the fee market that probably can still hash out a little bit, but I'm just thinking like from an implementer's point of view, um, the bulk of the work is getting consensus on um, where the uh, I guess where the, the fees like are being tracked, whether it's in the system address or in the block header. And that's like the most important aspect uh, to me as an implementer. And if okay. we can get that merged, then we can iterate on the actual like fee mechanism later on. Yeah, the fee market later on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's any pushback on the header. So I think, but I think, yeah, if Ansgar can review that, give a thumbs up, then we can merge it probably sometime next week. and. And also just briefly, by the way, that, that's one of the nice things about the P market, at least that it's like, it's purely like a theoretical kind of question. And so once we have a kind of a final decision there, it should be really lightweight in either way uh, on, on, the, on the implementers, like that this should not be at all, like one of the challenges for, for implementers, whatever we land on. Anything else anyone wants to talk about? Um, in the last uh, 4844 meeting, um, we had brought up that test coverage on both Geth and Prism needed some work. Is that something um, that's still either in progress or active or needs help with? Yeah, I can give an update on that. So. Um... So since the last meeting, I so a few days after the last meeting, I managed to um, sync uh, Mofi's awesome repo with our latest develop branch. So it took me like a while actually to see that just because there's so many conflicts. So I finally finished that. And um, as of our update, so this Friday we'll release our V3, we'll release our V3 release. So that means that um, there will not be any code changes unless like critical bug is found post merge. So I think like after this Friday, our code should be in a very stable place. And then so after this Friday, maybe over the weekend, I will resync again from um, just to make sure the code is in the, in the latest state. And after the, I'm finished that, I will ping you or anyone else that's interested to contribute. So therefore, then we can start adding more unit tests. So sorry, it's hard right now or the last few weeks just because there's so many moving pieces. And yeah, I think we should be in a much better state coming soon. Okay, awesome, thanks. Um, I had uh, one other comment about uh, some of the perf stuff. Um, I, I don't have a ton of context, but just a quick suggestion or question, I guess. Uh, are folks using like flame graphs to measure performance or how, how is that process working? Feel, feel uh, free to say uh, talk offline or whatever. We typically do that um, on like a running process. So yeah, we definitely do that. But I would say like we'll do unit tests. We'll make sure like production performance. So we'll, we'll so so we'll run the node and we'll run flame graphs to to see the latency of just for the traces as well. And yeah, we I mean we do everything. So definitely like anything you, you can help, like feel free to take it. Cool. Thanks. Anything else?
Okay, um, I guess last thing before we wrap up, uh, does it make sense to already schedule another call or should we wait a bit? Um, and the reason for waiting is like about a month from now, the merge is scheduled to happen on mainnet. So I feel like we can maybe schedule something today, but there's a world where we just canceled it if like it's really close to the merge. So I don't know what, what do people prefer? Or is it, and is it also worth waiting to like, we've had time to actually talk with the, the CL teams um, or should we just, yeah, schedule something optimistically and if the merge happens on that day, we scrap it. Um, do people have a preference? Okay, yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, let's wait after the next CL call, see if we've had time to discuss, see if we get time to discuss any of those issues on the CL call, and then we can we can potentially uh, schedule something after that. Cool, anything else before we wrap up? Okay, well, yeah, thanks a ton, everyone. Um, and yeah, talk to you all on the Discord. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. See ya. Yeah. yeah.